So the whole journey with Sediba and Synchrotron began back in 2009 when we first brought uh, the fossil here, and that resulted in some tremendous research. It's lasted decades uh, from the early days of ID-17, and then as we brought more fossils back, ID-19, and now I brought not only Sediba back, which is, is kind of neat, coming back to this brand new beam line, uh, BM-18, but also this extraordinary specimen. I know it doesn't look extraordinary, Inside of here is a child skeleton of Homo naledi and potentially some other objects. And this is the only instrument in the world that can image inside of this and give us the kind of resolution we need to do the science we need to do. I think the difference is, as I've watched over, over more than a decade, the synchrotron grow as we, we move from the early beam lines, which were perhaps not specially designed for this kind of work, to the next generation, and finally, we're looking at the longest beam line in the world and, and one of the most powerful x-rays in the world designed for this. And it is, it's hard to put into words how excited I am to see the results of, of these specimens in front of this incredible machine. As with all science, uh, it's all incremental. We, we know that we got better images than we've ever achieved before of, for example, the Australopithecus sediba material. And that should allow us to answer some of the important questions about the life and death of both the individual MH1 Carabo, the type specimen of that species, but also of the whole species itself. Um, I've yet to see what's it, the magic that the uh, synchrotron is going to reveal inside of here, but I, I can't wait.